Amidst the fear and tragedy of the plague taking hold in London, Sam turns his mind once again to the matter of love between Sir George Carter, its eldest son, and Lady Jemima Montague. Paranoia has begun to set in. Sam's subconscious is being penetrated by the grave news and observations that become apparent, though in the midst of it all, he still finds time for occasional merriment. From Lockdown London in April 2020, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's time once again for us to travel back to the year 1665. Are you sitting comfortably? Good, then we'll begin. I'm Tom Barclay Matchett, the London storyteller. I share the stories of the people, places and personalities that have made London the finest city on earth. I'm currently sharing readings from the diary of Samuel Pepys from the year 1665, an era with many similarities to our own. Now please, make yourself comfortable. And we'll begin. The 15th of July, 1665. Up, and after all business done at the office, though late, I to Deptford. But before I went out of the office, saw there young Bagwell's wife returned, but could not stay to speak with her, though I had great mind to it. And also another great lady, as to fine clothes, did attend there to have a ticket signed, which I did do, taking her through the garden to my office, where I signed it and had salute of her. And so I away by boat to Redriff, and thence walked, and after dinner at Sir George Carteret, where they stayed till almost three o'clock for me, and anon took boat, Mr Carteret and I, to the ferry place at Greenwich, and there stayed an hour, after crossing the water too, and again to get our coach and horses over, and by and by set out, and so toward Dagenham. But, Lord, what silly discourse we had, by the way, as to the matter of love matters. He being the most awkward man I ever met with all in my life as to that business. Thither we, we came by time to begin to be dark, and were kindly received by my Lady Wright and my Lord Crewe. And to discourse they went, my Lord discoursing with him, asking him questions of Travel, which he answered well enough in a few words, but nothing to the Lady from him at all. To supper and after supper to talk again, he yet taking no notice of the Lady. My Lord would have me would have me had consented to leaving the young people to-night to begin their amours, him, his staying being but to be little, but I advised against it, lest the lady might be too much surprised. So they led him up to his chamber, where I stayed a little, to know how he liked the lady, which he told me he did mightily. But, Lord, in the dullest, insipid manner that I e that ever lover did. So I bid him good night and down to prayers with my Lord Crewe's family. And after prayers, my Lord and Lady Wright and I to consult what to do. And it was agreed at last to have them go to church together as, a, as the family used to do, though his lameness was a great objection against it. But at last my Lady Jemima sent me word by my Lady Wright that it would be better to do just as they used to do before his coming, and therefore she desired to go to church, which was yielded then to. The 16th of July, 1665, Lord's Day. I up, having lain with Mr Moore in the chaplain's chamber, and having trimmed myself down, down to Mr Carteret. And he being ready, we down and walked in the gallery an hour or two, it being a most noble and pretty house that ever for bigness I saw. Here I taught him what to do, 
to take the lady always by the hand to lead her, and telling him that I would find opportunity to leave them two together. He should make these and these compliments, and also take time to do the same to my Lord Crewe and Lady Wright. After I had instructed him, which he thanked me for, owning that he needed my teaching him, my Lord Crewe came down, and family, the young lady among the rest, and so by coaches to church four miles off, where a pretty good sermon, and a declaration of penitence of a man that had undergone the church censure for his wicked life. Thence back again by coach, Mr Carteret not having not had the confidence to take his lady once by the hand, coming or going, which I told him of when we came home, and he will hereafter do it. So to dinner, my lord, excellent discourse, then to walk in the gallery, and to sit down. By and by, my lady write, and I go out, and then my lord crew, he not by design... And lastly, my lady crew came out and left the young people together. And a little pretty daughter of my lady Wright's most innocently came out afterwards and shut the door too, as if she had done it, poor child, by inspiration, which made us without have good sport to laugh at. They together an hour, and by and by church time, whither he led her into the coach and into the church, And so at church all the afternoon, several handsome ladies at church. But it was most extraordinary hot that I ever knew. So home again, and to walk in the gardens, where we left the young couple a second time. And my lady Wright and I walked together, who to my trouble tells me that my lady Jemima must have something done to her body by Scott before she can be married, and therefore care must be had to send him. Also, that more new clothes must of necessity be made her, which, and other things, I took care of. Anon to supper, and excellent discourse and dispute between my Lord Crewe and the chaplain, who was a good scholar but a nonconformist. Here this evening I spoke with Mrs Carter, my old acquaintance that hath lived with the late my lady these twelve or thirteen years, the sum of all whose discourse and others for her is that I would get her a good husband, which I have promised, but know not when I shall perform. After Mr Carter carried to his chamber, we to prayers again, and then to bed. The 17th of July, 1665. Up, all of us, and a billiards. My lady Wright, Mr Carteret, and myself, and everybody. By and by, the young couple left together, anon to dinner, and after dinner, Mr Carteret took my advice about giving to the servants, and I led him to give ten pounds amongst them, which he did by leaving it to the chief manservant, Mr Meadows, to do for him. <coughs> Before we went, I took my Lady Jemima apart, and would know how she liked this gentleman, and whether she was under any difficulty concerning him. She blushed and hid her face a while, but at last I forced her to tell me. She answered that she could readily obey what her father and mother had done, which was all she could say, or I expect. So a non took leave and for London, but Lord, to see, among other things, how all these great people here are afeard of London, being doubtful of anything that comes from thence, or hath lately been there, that I was forced to say I live wholly at Woolwich. In our way, Mr Carteret did give me mighty thanks for my care and pains for him, and is mightily pleased though the truth is, my Lady Jemima hath carried herself with mighty discretion and gravity, not being forward at all in any degree, but mighty serious in her answers to him. The 18th of July, 1665. Up and to the office, where all the morning, and so to my house, and ate a bit of victuals, and so to the change, where a little business, and a very thin exchange, and so walked through London to the Temple, where I took water for Westminster to the Duke of Albemarle to wait on him, and so to Westminster Hall, 
and there paid for my news books and did give, his, give Mrs. Mitchell, who's going out of town because of the sickness, and her husband a pint of wine. And so to Sir William Warren, coming to me by appointment, we away by water home, by the way discoursing about the project I have of getting some money and doing the king a good service too about the mastock at Woolwich, which I fear will never be done if I do not go about it. After dispatching letters at the office, I by water down to Deptford, where I stayed a little while, and by water to my wife, whom I have not seen for these past six or five days, and there supped with her, and mighty pleasant, and saw with content her drawings, and so to bed mighty merry, I was much troubled this day to hear at Westminster how the officers do bury the dead in the open tuttle fields, pretending want of room elsewhere, whereas the new chapel churchyard was walled in at the last public charge in the last plague time, merely for want of room, and now none but such as are able to pay dear for it can be buried there. The 20th of July, 1665. Up in a boat, among other people, to the tower, and there to the office, where we sat all morning. So down to Deptford, and there dined, and after dinner saw my Lady Sandwich and Mr Carteret, and his two sisters over the water, going to Dagenham's, and my Lady Carteret toward Cranbourne. So all the company broke up in the most extraordinary joy, wherein I am mighty contented that I have had the good fortune to be so instrumental, and I think it will be of good use to me. So walk to Redriff, where I hear the sickness is, and indeed is scattered almost everywhere. There die 1,089 of the plague this week, my Lady Carteret did this day give me a bottle of plague water to take home with me. So home to write letters late, and then home to bed, where I have not lay in for these last three or four nights. I received yesterday a letter from my Lord Sandwich, giving me thanks for my care about their marriage business, and desiring it to be, to be dispatched, that no disappointment may happen therein, which I will help on all I can. This afternoon I waited on the Duke of Albemarle, and so to Mrs. Crofts, where I found and saluted Mrs. Burroughs, who was a very pretty woman for a mother of so many children. But, Lord, to see how the plague spreads here, it now all over King Street, at the Axe, and next door to it, and in other places. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to add your comments, like and subscribe. Cheerio!